Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AWS reInvent 2021 live from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin. We have two set, two live sets here with theCUBE, two remote sets, over 100 guests on the program for three and a half days talking about the next decade in cloud innovation. And I have two alumni back with me. Please welcome back Mandy Dollywall, the CMO of Boomi, and Ed McCoskey, the head of product at Boomi. Guys, it's so great to see you. Great to see you, Lisa, great thank to see you. you. As well. In person. I know, this live, is amazing. Live, in Zoom. It's amazing. Incredible. So in the time since it's been, since I've seen you, Boomi is a verb. You, I can see your cheeks oh. bursting. Yeah. Just Boomi it. Go Boomi it. Go Boomi it. Yes. Talk to me about what, what that means, because this is something that you discovered through customers during the pandemic. Absolutely, and, and really it's a testament to the platform that's been built and the experience of 18,000 customers, 100,000 community members. Anytime there's disparate data and it needs to be connected in a way that's secure, reliable, performant, and it just works, that confidence and trust, our customers are telling us that they just boomy it. And so we figured it was a rally cry, and as a marketing team, it was handed to us. We didn't have to push a boulder uphill. Our customers are, are just boomying it, and so our rally cry to the market is, take advantage of the experience of those that have come before you and go build what you need to. It works. Period, it works. Well, as the chief marketing officer, there's probably nothing better, nothing better than the validating voice of the customer, right? Yep. Um, that's the most honest that you're going to get, but having a customer create the verb for you there's going to be nothing that prepares you for that, nothing like it, but also how great does that make it when you're having conversations with prospective customers or even partners, that there's that confidence and that trust that your 18,000 plus now customers have right. in Boomi. Right, and adding what, eight a day? Yeah. This, every day we're adding eight new customers. Eight new customers a day. The Boomiverse is what, 100,000 strong now? Yes, My in gosh. two years we built that. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness, during yeah. the pandemic? The momentum is incredible. Yeah, It is incredible. 70% yeah. year on year growth from a usage perspective, so yeah, we're skyrocketing through you the You must need like, uh, you know, neck braces from whiplash going so fast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, we're ready. Oh yeah. Good, I know, I know you are. So talk to me about, you know, we've seen such change in the last 22 months. Massive acceleration to the cloud, digital transformation. We're now seeing every company has to be a data company to survive and actually to be competitive, you know, to be a competitor. But one of the things that used to be okay back in the day was, you know, these uh, experiences that weren't integrated. Like when you went to, like when I was back in college and I would go in and you would pay for this class and that class and everything was disconnected and we didn't know what we didn't know. Now, the integrated experience is table stakes for any organization. Ed, talk to me about when you're talking with customers where are they like across industries and going, we don't have a choice, we've got to be able to connect these experiences for our customers, for our employees, and to be a competitor. Yeah, I mean, it used to be about, for us, application, data integration, that sort of thing, that's where we were born, but particularly through the pandemic, it's become integrated experiences and automation. Um, it's not just about moving data between systems, that sort of thing, it's about connecting with your end users, your employees, your customers, et cetera, like you were saying, and automating and using intelligence to continue automating those things faster. Because if, if you're not moving faster in today's world, you're, you're in peril, so. And that was one of the themes that we were actually talking about this morning during our kickoff that you're hearing is every company is a data company and if they're not, they're not going to be around much longer. Manny, talk to me when you're talking with customers who have to really reckon with that and go, how, how do we connect these experiences? Because if we can't do that, then we're not going to be around. Yeah, it, it, the answer lies in the problems, right? There are real world problems that need to be solved. We have a customer just north of here, a, a, a university, and um, as they were bringing students back to campus, right, you're trying to deliver a connected campus experience. Well, how do you handle contact tracing, right, for COVID-19? That's a real modern day problem, right? And so you're able to now connect disparate data sources to go deliver on a way, an automated way, to be able to handle that and provide safety to your students table stakes. Oh, it is. Right? Digital identity management. Again, in a university set, setting, critical. Right? So these things are now a part of our fabric of the way we live. The consumerization of tech has hit B2B. It's merging. Yeah. 
And it's good. There's definitely silver linings that have come out of the last 22 months, and I'm sure there will be a few more as we go through Omicron and whatever Greek letter is next in the alphabet. But I want to. Here we are at reInvent. So much. There's always so much news at reInvent. Here we are. First, tenth, tenth reInvent, which I can't believe. Tenth reInvent. AWS is 15 years old. Brand new leader. And of course, yesterday Ed starts the flood of announcements. Yesterday, right. today. Talk to me about what it's like to be part of that powerful AWS ecosystem from a partner perspective and how, how influential is Boomi and its customers and the Boomiverse in the direction that AWS goes in? Because they're so customer obsessed like you guys are. Well, it was really exciting for us because we're a customer and a partner of AWS, right? We, we run our infrastructure on AWS, so we get to take advantage of all the new announcements that they make and all the cool stuff they bring to the table, so really excited for that. But also as all these things come up and customers want to take advantage of them, if they're creating different data sets, different data silos or opportunity for automation around the business, we're right there for our customers and partners to go take advantage of that and, and quickly get these things up and running as they get released by AWS. So it's all very exciting and we look forward to all these different announcements. Well one of the things also that I felt in the last day and a half since everything really kicked off yesterday was the customer flywheel. AWS always talks about we work backwards from the customer forwards. And that is a resounding theme that I'm hearing throughout all of the partners that I've talked about. They have a massive ecosystem. Boomi has a massive ecosystem. Do. Working with those partners, but also ensuring that you know, at the end of the day, we're here to help customers ch resolve problems. Problems that are here today, problems that are going to be here tomorrow. How do you help customers deal with, Mandy, with, with some of the challenges of today when they say, Mandy, help us future-proof our integrations, what we're doing going forward. What does that mean to Boomi? Yeah, I think for us, the way we approach it is, you start with Boomi for, with a connectivity kind of problem, right? We're able to, to take disparate data silos and be able to connect and be able to create this backbone of connectivity. Once you have that, you can go build these workflows and these user engagement mechanisms to automate these processes and scale, right? So that's point one. We have a company uh, called HealthBridge Financial, right? They're a health tech company, financial services company. They are working towards, they run on AWS, they, they have a, a very um, a secure, compliant, infrastructure requirement, especially around HIPAA because they're dealing with healthcare, right? And they have needs to be able to integrate quickly and not a big budget to start with. They grew very quickly and Boomi powered their, their AWS ecosystem. So as their workloads grew on RDS as well as SQS S3, we were able to go in and perform these HIPAA compliant integrations for them so they could go provide reimbursement on medical spending claims for their end customers. So not only did we give them user engagement and an outstanding customer experience, we were able to help them grow as a business and be able to leverage the AWS ecosystem. That's a win-win-win across the board for all of us. That's one plus one equals three for sure. Yep. One of the things too that's interesting is, you know, when we see the, the plethora of AWS services, like I mentioned a minute ago, there's always so many announcements, but there's so much choice for customers. Right. When you're talking, Ed, with customers, Boomi customers that, that are looking for AWS services, tell me about some of those conversations. How do you help guide them along that journey? Yeah, I mean, we help them from an architectural standpoint as far as what services they should choose from AWS to integrate their different data sources within the AWS ecosystem and maybe to others. Um, we've helped our customers, going back a little bit too to the future proofing, over the time we've had our platform, we've connected with our customers over 180,000 different data sources, including AWS and others, that as we continue to grow, our customers never need to upgrade. We're a cloud model ourselves running in AWS, so they just get to keep taking advantage of that as their business grows and evolves, and as AWS grows and evolves for them, and they're modernizing their infrastructure, bringing it in AWS, we continue to stay out in the forefront with keeping connectivity and, and automation and integration options available And for that's them. a massive advantage for customers in any industry, especially I know one of the first things I thought of when the pandemic first struck and we saw this, you know, the rise of the pharma companies working on vaccine was Moderna. Moderna's a Boomi customer. Yes, they are. Talk to me about some of the things that you've helped them facilitate because there was that, obviously that time where everyone scattered, nobody could get on site. Right. Having a cloud native solution must have been a huge advantage yeah, well, to getting us all back here, really. Exactly, first and foremost, getting more people on board into their business to help go find the race for the cure. And then being able to connect that data, right, that they were generating and really find a solution. So we had an integral role to play in that. That's definitely a feather in our cap. We're really proud of that. Um, again, right, it's, it's about speed and agility and the way we're architected, we're a low code platform. We're not developer heavy. You can log in and go 
and start building right away. What, what used to take months, now takes weeks if not days if you use the, the Boomi platform. Those brittle code integrations no longer need to be a part of your day to day. And that probably was a major instrument in the survival of a lot of businesses in the very beginning when it was chaotic right. and it was pivot, 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 pivot. Right. That, that, you know, one of the things we learned during the pandemic is that there is access to real-time data, right. real-time integrations isn't a nice to have anymore. Yeah. It's required, it's fundamental for employee experiences, customer experiences in every industry. Even, even in banking, we've had several banks who were able to stand up and start taking PPP loans. Uh, they used to do this in person, they were able to take them within, literally some of our banks within four days. Had the whole process built in. Wow. Wow. And so, from a differentiation perspective, how have your customer conversations changed? Obviously, Go Boomy It is now right. is something that you, do you have t-shirts yet, by the way? They're coming. And can I get one? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. But talk to me about how those customer conversations have changed. Is, is what Boomi enables organizations, is this now at the C-suite, the board level, going, we've got to make sure that these data sources are connected, because they're only going to keep proliferating. Yeah, I think it's coming, right? We're not quite there yet, but as we're starting to get this groundswell at the integration developer level, at the enterprise architect level, I think the C-suite especially is realizing the value of the, the delivery of this integrated experience now, right? These data-fueled experiences are the differentiators for new business models. Oh, yeah. So transformation is something that's required. Obviously you need to modernize, we heard about that in the keynotes mm -hmm. here at the conference, but now it's the innovation layer and that's where we're squarely focused is once you're able to connect this data and be able to modernize your systems, how do you go build new business models with innovation? That's where the C-suite's leaning in with us. Got it, and that's the opportunities to really unlock the value of all this data and identify new right. products, new services, new target markets, and really that innovation kicks the door wide open on a competitor if right. you're focused on really becoming a data company, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are some of the things that, that you're looking forward to as we, as we wrap up 2021 and let's cross our fingers, we're going into a much better 2022. What, question for both of you, Ed, we'll start with you. What's next for Boomi? So we just recently laid out our hyper automation vision, right? And what hyper automation is, is adding intelligence, artificial intelligence and machine learning to your automation to make you go faster and faster and help you with decisions um, that you may have been making over and over as an example or any workflows you do as an employee. So there is this convergence of RPA and iPaaS that's happening in the market and we're on the forefront of that around robotic process automation and then bringing that, those types of things into our platform and just helping our customers automate more and more because that's what they're looking for. That's what GoBoomi it's all about. They've integrated their stuff. We, we're taking the lead from our, our customers who are automating things. We had Blue Force Tracking as an example where in Amsterdam they have security guards running around and, and, and using um, wearable devices to track them on cameras and that's not an application integration use case, that's automation. So we're moving there, we're looking with our customers on how we can help them get faster and better and provide things like safety in that use case. So. And where are our customers in terms of of embracing hyper automation. Because when we talk about, to, we know a lot of news around AI and ML the last day and a half, but when you think about kind of like where are most organizations with, from a maturation perspective, are they ready for hyper automation? I think they're ready for automation. They're learning about hyper automation. I think we're pushing the term f further ahead. You know, we're, we're, we're on the forefront of that because industries are thinking, com our customers are thinking about automation. They're thinking about AI, ML. We're introducing them to hyper automation and, and kind of explaining to them, you're doing this already. Think more along these lines. How can you drive your business forward with these? And they're embracing it really well so far. Is that conversation elevating up to the board level yet? Is that a board level initiative or what it, focus? It, it's, it's a little more grassroots. I think that's, I was thinking that's where GoBoomia came from because the, the employees' teams are solving problems, they're showcasing these things to their executives and saying, look at the cool stuff we're doing for the business, and the executives are now saying, well, with this problem, can we now go, boom, can we boomy it? Because they're, they're, they're starting to understand what we can do. That's awesome, my goodness. Mandy, you've been the Chief Marketing Officer for three, over three years now, I can't believe. The amount of change that you've seen, not just the last 22 months, but the, the last three years, what are you excited about as Boomi heads into 2022? 
I think it's the new opportunities to get deeper and broader into the market. Our ownership changed, as you know, this yes. past year. And um, you know, we have a new leg on growth, if you will, right? And so a whole new trajectory ahead of us, bigger brand building, more pervasiveness, more ease of use around our platform, right? We're available now in a pay-as-you-go model on, on our website, on, on a $50 a month model, or, uh, at, um, Atmosphere Go, and then also on Marketplace. So we're making the product and the platform more accessible to more people so they can begin on faster, build faster, and go solve these problems. So really, democratizing integration is something that I'm very excited I like about. That. Democratizing integration. As well as more air coverage, just to let people know that this technology exists. So it's really a marketer's dream. And why they should go boom it, right? Exactly. You guys, it was great to have you on the program. Congratulations on the success, on, on becoming a verb. That's pretty awesome. I'll look forward to my t-shirt. So small. Salute. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, for my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the global leader in live tech coverage.